how truly it is quoted by Albert Einstein. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as if everything is. With this beautiful thought, a very good morning to all my dear students. I hope that you all are in good health. This is Shreya Jadav welcoming you all to my e-learning channel. And today we are going to learn English Grade 9 Poem 4 The Lake of Innisfree Written by W.B. Yeats So, before going and starting with the reading and explanation of the poem along with the figures of speech, let us know something about the poet. W.B. Yeats, born on 13th June 1865, died on 28th January 1939, was an Irish poet and one of the foremost figures of 20th century literature. In December 1923, Yeats was awarded Nobel Prize in Literature for his always inspiring poetry, which is highly artistic and gives expression to the spirit of whole nation. Yeats is generally considered as one of the 20th century's popular English poets. He was a symbolic poet because he used elusive imaginary and symbolic structures throughout his career. Yeats chose words and assembled them brilliantly in his poetry. In addition to a particular meaning, they suggest other abstract thoughts that seem more significant. Yeats dies at a hotel in France. So now let us go through the introduction for answers. Dear students, always keep in mind that whenever you are appearing for any test or exams, start your question answers with introduction. This creates a good impact. Poem Poem's name, the Lake Isles of Innisfree. Poet's name, W.B. Yeats. Genre, Lyric. Summary. This poem reflects the tranquility of life. So now, let us go through the summary of the poem. This well-known poem explores the poet's longing for the peace and tranquility of Innisfree, a place where he has spent a lot of his time as a boy. This poem is a lyric. It is a musical poem. It explores the poet's longing for the peace and tranquility of Innisfree. Innisfree is the name of a place. It is a very quiet place and that is the reason the poet wants to go there. He, wa he had spent his childhood in, his, in that place. He has very sweet memories of that place. That is why he wanted to go back to that lake island. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin built there of clay and vettels made. Nine beans rows will I have there, a hive for honeybee and live alone in a bee cloud glad. So over here, first let us go through the difficult words. Arise means to stand up. Cabin means a small room. Vettels means twisted sticks for making fences and walls. Glade means clearing or to have an open space. 
Beak loud refers to the sound which has been usually made by the bees, the buzzing sound. I over here refers to the poet W. B. Yeats. He says that he wants to go to Innisfree. Over there, he will build a small room for himself with clay and small sticks which are used to make the walls or fences of the cabin as he will need some food to eat also. So he will go grow nine rows of beans near his room. Also he will get the honey from the honey beehive. He says that open space where he will build his room will be full of buzzing sound of the bees and over there he will live all alone in peace and tranquility and i shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the wails of the morning to where the cricket sings their midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evenings full of linnet's wings so over here whales means a a piece of fine material which has been worn by a woman to protect or hide the face cricket is a sort of insect um we can say related to grasshopper Then we have linnet. Linnet is a small brown and grey bird with short beak. And glimmer means something which is very shining. So in this stanza, the poet says that when in Innisfree, he will feel peaceful. And he says that the feeling of peace is felt slowly and gradually. He describes how he would feel peaceful in the morning time when it is cloudy and the view is not very clear then it will appear as if the morning has worn a veil and has hidden itself looking at this scene will make him feel peaceful further he says that when the male figure cricket insect will sing the song that sound will bring him at peace also at midnight when he will see the twinkling stars in the open sky their shine will give him peace in the afternoon when the sunlight will give him purplish glow it will also give him peace during the evening when he will see the linnet bird flying in the sky then also he will feel peaceful i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear the lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore while i stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray i hear it in the deep heart score over here night and day means 24/7 all time lapping means striking heart score heart score means the innermost part of the heart which is very near so in this stanza the poet says that now he will stand up and he would go to in his free because all the time the sound of the lake waters striking the shore repeats in his mind this sound attracts him towards the lake whereas wherever he is either standing on the roadway or on the gray colored pavement he hears the sound deep in the innermost part of his heart so this is all about the reading and explanation of the poem written by w b yeats now let us go through the figures of speech the first figure of speech 
I will rise and go now and go to Innisfree. So over here, the first figure of speech is repetition. When words are repeated, it is known as repetition. So over here, we have words like go and end. These two words are repeated over here. So this will be called a repetition. The second one is and a small cabin built there of clay and vettles made. So over here, the first figure of speech is anastrophe. Anastrophe means what? Inversion in construction of the sentence. That is known as anastrophe. Over here, we can understand or we can come to know like this, that the sentence might be in a jumbled form. The sentence may break into two or three different uh, parts and sections and then it is being put in different orders for poetic effect. The third one is nine bean rows will I have there a hive for the honeybee. So over here the first one is alliteration. Here the consonant sound H is being used in the words like have, hive and honeybee that is being used. The next one is anastrophe. Over here inversion in the construction of the sentence. Over here the sentence will be arranged in the jumble parts. Okay, jumble words. We all have learned this. Yes, so the sentence is also placed in, we can say, uneven number, not in chron chronological order for the poetic effect. The fourth one is, and live alone in the bee cloud, loud glad. So the first one is alliteration over here. So here the consonant sound A or a uh, is being repeated in the words like alone and and. So this we'll consider as alliteration. The next one is onomatopoeia. Over here we have words like b louds which represents the sound. The fifth one is and I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow. So over here the first one, the first figure of speech is repetition, which means the words are being repeated over here. And we have the word peace, which is being repeated. The next one is, Dropping from the veil of the morning to where the cricket sings. So over here the first one is repetition. So over here the word the is being repeated. The next one, the next figure of speech is internal rhyme. So over here the words like dropping and morning are used. And they are rhyming internally. So, this is considered as internal rhyme. The next one is onomatopoeia. So, over here the word sings represents the sound. So, this will become onomatopoeia. The seventh one. Their midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow. So over here the first figure of speech is alliteration. Over here the consonant sound G is being used in the words like glimmer and glow. So um, this could be considered as alliteration. The next one is and evenings full of linnets wings so the first one is metaphor over here there is indirect comparison made between the 
wings and the poet means they both want to be as free the poet wants to be as free as the bird is the linnet bird is the ninth one is i will arise and go now for always night and day so over here the first figure of speech is repetition that is words and is been repeated twice so that will become repetition the next one is alliteration over here the consonant sound a uh, is been used in the words like arise always and n and the sound n is also been used in now and night the next one is antithesis here the opposite word night and day are been used together in one single line so that is considered as antithesis where opposite words are used the next one is i hear the lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore so over here the first one is alliteration that is the consonant sound l is been repeated in the words like lapping and lake and we have s sound that is sounds and shore the 11th one is while i stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray i hear it in the deep heart's core so the first one is tautology over here unnecessary use of words for poetic effect is done over here pavement and roadway means one and the same they both are similar to each other but yet they are written together for the poetic effect so this will become tautology and the last figure of speech is synecdoc a synecdoc what is the meaning of synecdoc a part stands for a whole or a whole stands for a part usually human beings are or we can say the living beings are taken uh, into consideration more so over here heart stands and represents the poet so this will become synecdoc now let us go through the quick revision of what we have done in today's video lecture so this poem reflects on the tranquility of life in fact living in a cottage is quite different from you no know, fast and hectic life we can enjoy nature when there is peace of mind but real peace is impossible in the city we can find it only in a solitary place the poet says that he is going to inisfri that is an island in ireland to build a small and a simple house or hut he will have make a nine beans rose and a honey bee or a honey bee's hive he wants to live alone in the peace with nature he has desire to enjoy the slow pace of countryside living at last the poet speaks that every night he hears the lake water lapping against the shore even though he lives in a city with the crowded roads he is drawn to the rural sounds of inisfri the poet is attracted to the sounds made by the rustling trees of course he has desired to keep himself aloof from the bustling sounds of bus buses for some times so over here the poet is reminded of his past his boyhood when he visited the peaceful lake 
Isles of Innisfree. He wants to go there and says that he will live there alone. He wants to build a small cabinet with clay and vessels. He would grow beans and get honey bee hive or honey to survive on. The poet describes the peaceful natural surroundings of the lake. He says that the scene of the cloudy morning, the shining stars, the glowing sun and birds flying in the sky give him peace. He feels relaxed to hear the pleasant sounds of cricket's songs. The poet feels the urgency to get to the Lake Isles of Innisfree. In the depth of his heart, he can hear the sound of the lake waters hitting the shore. It is as if the lake is calling him. He hears the sound everywhere, either on the crowded roads or the grey-coloured pavements of the city in which he lives. This indicates that he wants to escape this materialistic and artificial life of the city into a peaceful surrounding of nature. So over here I refers to the poet William Butler Yeats. He says that he wants to go to Innisfree. Over there he will build a small room for himself with clay and small sticks which are used to make the walls and fences of his cabin as he will need some food to eat also. So he will grow nine rows of beans near his room. Also he will get the honey from honey bee hive. He says that the open space where he will build his room will be full of buzzing sound of bees and over there he will live all alone in peace and tranquility. The poet also says that when in Innisfree he will feel peaceful and he says that the feeling of peaceful is felt slowly and gradually. He describes how he would feel peaceful. In the morning time, when it is cloudy and the view is not clear, then it will appear as if the morning has worn a veil and has hidden itself. Looking at this scene will make him pe feel peaceful. Further, he says that when the male cricket insect will sing a song, the sound will bring him at peace. Also, at midnight when he will see the twinkling stars in the open sky, their shine will give him peace. In the afternoon when the sunlight will give a purplish glow, it will also give him peace. During the evening when he will see the linnet bird flying in the sky, then also he will feel peaceful. And in the last stanza, the poet says that now he will stand up and he would go to Innisfree because all the time the sound of the lake waters striking the shore repeats in his mind. This sound attracts him towards the lake. Wherever he is, either standing on the roadway or on the grey coloured pavement, he hears the sound deep in the innermost part of his heart. This is all about the reading and explanation of the poetry along with the summary and figures of speech. So now let us know, have a quick look on one of the quote. How 
Well, it has been said by Nelson Mandela, no one is born hating another person because color of his skin or his background or his must learn to hate. And if they can learn to, can be taught to love. For love comes more the human heart than its opposite. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you still have any doubt or queries, you can comment down in the comment section below. Goodbye everyone and have a great day.